All right, let's get started. So, um, hello and welcome to the Sumo platform meeting. It's October the 7th. Um, we have items from last week, so we can dive right in. And there are a few items for the roundtable yet, so if you have anything that you would like to talk about, um, still lots of room. Otherwise, this could be a short meeting. Who knows? <laughs> For a change. <laughs> okay. So the first thing that we have here is Kadir and Michael AB testing a short version of the update Firefox article. Uh, so Michael actually set this up. Uh, the uh, update article, update Firefox article, is so short now. Uh, it's essentially only three steps, uh, three steps and four sentences or something. So yeah. it is really short. Um, Michael, do you want to talk about the results or? Uh, sure. Well, and, and they're still coming in, so I don't understand. So, um, so I made it super short, uh, like on Friday evening or something. Um, so Friday votes on it don't really count. But Saturday and Sunday, and I think Monday, the votes jumped way up, of course, but the percentage stayed the same. Um, and it's because I think it makes the, uh, the uh, survey much more visible. It's like right there now. Um, so, and this is what we saw when we did collapsible sections, right? So um, it makes the survey more visible. Lots more people, like double the amount of people voted on the article. They didn't rate it any higher, which leads me to think though, part of the, the thing is, is that all the information that I cut out was also unnecessary. Like if it was necessary, if that was really missing now from the article, this was clear information that people wanted they would be voting the article down. Um, at least that's my theory. I don't know, Kadir, do you want to say anything else? Yeah, exactly. Uh, essentially for me, the biggest, the, the most interesting thing was that, that um, the number jumped up, the number of votes jumped up. Uh, and that's pretty much, actually that's pretty much what we had expected. Um, but uh, the next step, like figuring out if, if like does the content, actually have anything to do with the um, with the votes that will be interesting to find out so Michael and I were talking uh, this week about making it could, even shorter control people <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well yeah the ideal case would be to just use uh, blind text and uh, compare that to the actual help article and see if there is any difference between them that is statistically significant uh, if not, then we should rethink the whole um, votes issue, uh, the whole article votes. But of course, you can't do that because those are real people who are, have real issues. So you want to actually help them. Um, but the alter one thing that we wanted to try out was to make it even shorter and to the point and see if that would still give us the same results. Um, because if, if yes, then maybe the way to go is uh, for the rest of the articles also to be way shorter and to relegate the less important information uh, to the uh, forums, to the long term, so to say, and keep articles crisp and short, uh, which would also help with localization. Or but, the solution is to collapse those sections so, so that the information is really there for the people who need it. Or that. Um, but yeah, so we wanted to test that. Uh, but it seems like this article, like, um, it's it's this is a hard one. So we want to do that with optimizely, um, but with optimizely you can't use the show for code. It uh, breaks show for. Uh, so when you when you edit an article, so we're still looking into how exactly to do that, like what the best way is to figure that out. And um, yeah, when we have results, I'm pretty sure that we will present them here, because anything that makes articles easier to read um, and at the same time keep the um, helpful voting at the same level would be useful because then we can decide do we want to still have that information or do we want to check it out and make it easier to localize, update, and whatever. Kadir, how did we do the test of the collapsible sections? Because did that not have any show for code in it? No, actually, well, yes, uh, but the editing wasn't done on Optimizely. The editing was done, uh, we put extra JavaScript into the page. Uh, Ricky did that. Um, it was actually a code change on the page. So we said oh. every, 
every, every yeah. article. So we had, we added extra uh, markup to the articles, and that right. was um, we we could uh, control that and optimizely with just a switch with a toggle, so to say. You would just call so, the function, and it would collapse it or um, show it. So is this something that we can do again? I mean, that's what I was like. Why why don't we do that again? Is it like a custom thing you have to do for each article you want to test? No, but there are no more sections to collapse. I mean, it is only one section, this article. No, no, no. So in the, in the articles that we tested with the collapsible sections, they had show for code in them. And we were able to test them without breaking the show for code. Yeah, but we were like showing or not showing sections, like uh, paragraphs. And the stuff that was visible didn't have any show for code in it? What well, I mean is, so we, we, we are collapsing like headings, um, like, like each heading was being collapsed. Right. And you can do that easily. But oh, in this article. we didn't change the rest of the article. Exactly. Yeah, we didn't change the article. Right. Got it. That was, the, that, that was the difference. Uh, in, this, in this case, there is only one section thing. We, we, I mean, we will still be able to do that. We just have to think a little bit about how exactly. Well, I mean, isn't the solution, isn't the thing that we can do is I can make multiple versions of this article and put them in the admin category and we can divert traffic to, you know, some goes to this version of the article, some go to that version of the article. Uh, yes, absolutely. The only thing that we can't do is we can't base it on, um, oh yeah, th at that point it would work. So what Optimizely doesn't do is uh, it, it doesn't let you um, uh, divert the stream based on the operating system, unfortunately. You can do it by browser, so you can tell right. it like, okay, show me this browser or that browser, uh, or show this to this browser or that browser, but you can't say show this to this operating system or this operating system. That's a serious limitation, in my opinion. But, um, but that's yeah, okay. so what we in can, case, right? yeah, it, it, the way that you describe it, yes. We could just uh, create different articles um, and then uh, send people uh, to a different article by chance. Like 50% would go to this one, 50% go to this other one. And then we wouldn't touch the uh, show for code. Uh, so at that point, it would totally work, yeah. We could do that. We should do that. Right. All right let's Yay for solutions. For <laughs> and no code changes, Ricky. <laughs> Yay for no code changes. And okay, this will even intercept the people coming from Mozilla.org? Everybody who we can go to that URL. E e yeah, even the ones being directed there from Mozilla.org? Because that's where most of them are coming from now. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So as yeah. long as they t hit that URL, they would be directed okay. uh, to, cool. to another place. Yeah, you know what? Actually, no, that, that is a, we can't even do that with Google Analytics. Google Analytics has A-B testing built in, and when you have different URLs, you can do that. Uh, so that will be even better, because on Google Analytics, we are already tracking uh, helpful numbers. Uh, so we wouldn't have to pipe everything through from, like what we would otherwise have to do is like we, tra we, we pipe everything through optimizely, and then to Google Analytics to get the event tracking. And then we have to get it out of Google Analytics again. Uh, so, but, but if we use Google Analytics with the, um, for the A-B testing itself, when we have different URLs, that's even better. That's even easier. Okay. Oh, cool. All right, wait, writing this down as a decision then for next week. The bubble sun? Yeah. Um, <laughs> where? I missed him. I thought that was. It was a snort. <laughs> I thought that was my stomach. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item that we have here is uh, this is a, this is one one thing from the last week. And as the short-term solution, we will go uh, with the text-only call to action. 
on the start page and we will set up infrastructure to measure contributor conversion rates in the mid to long term and test more obvious CTAs in the future. So this is obviously not something that we can do from one week to the other. Um, but uh, there might be a three-step solution to this, uh, focusing on the flows first, uh, agreeing on the flows, then uh, deciding on the numbers that we want to measure, and then doing the actual measuring. Uh, so uh, the, the short-term solution, uh, doing just the CTA, uh, the call to action, the text textual call to action, there is already a bug for that that Michael filed. Uh, we have a bit of a discussion there, what the actual, like, the textual CTA should look like, uh, because Rehan isn't so happy with the <coughs> web background. I don't know why, but he has some... He, he, uh, has, um, he hates the bad background. I don't know. I, I hate the blue button on its own, but don't have that strong opinions. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that we will be able to solve this today or tomorrow and then put that, put that into, the, um, into production. So that we have only the CTA for the short term. Um, yeah. So uh, that's actions from last week. And then we have updates and notes for this week. So the, the, it says that we still have the right KPIs. And for everybody who wasn't in the Monday meeting, here's some context. On Monday, we talked about the helpfulness rating uh, of articles and the exit survey results, and uh, which one of those things that we have on the KPI dashboard today uh, should still be there. And um, that is, of course, an extended discussion. Uh, so uh, this this is not today is not the uh, the time to make that final call or whatever. But uh, we have to start the discussion at some point. So I thought today would be um, uh, as good as any other day uh, to to get that started to uh, make sure that everybody starts thinking about that if they are interested in in, in those uh, KPIs. Uh, so yeah, at this point, um, I mean, we, we could use this as a discussion round uh, to see what questions are there. Uh, maybe we can already uh, answer some some questions or um, get to work on finding out more for, for next week and the week after that uh, to get to a good list of uh, KPIs that we can um, uh, then then present to the rest of the team uh, to decide whether we should leave the ones that are on the page today or the different ones, or at least, and maybe this is also a good outcome, qualify uh, the KPIs uh, that are on the KPI dashboard today. Um, so things that we don't do, for example, is um, uh, confidence intervals. Like we, we give the data, but no confidence interval. And actually, an average without a confidence interval is not all that useful um, to, to make decisions or to decide whether it's good or bad. Um, so that could be also a likely outcome of, of this discussion. Um, yeah, so just asking in, in, into the white, so to say, like, uh, does anybody have any, uh, any questions about this already or any thoughts um, regarding, regarding this? No. All right. Yeah, well, um, because if, if there's, yeah. Like, no, go ahead. Like, uh, Please. Well, like the, um, I mean, yeah, the the helpfulness, right? I mean, the, <clears throat> I, I mean, really, what we have is we have it on the, is this the, on the KB dashboard, mm -hmm. right? We collect locale uh, metrics. Um, is that the same? And I don't know if we're, which one is like the overall or what the heck's going on there. So on the KPI dashboard, we have the overall metrics. Right. And on the local dashboards, we have the ones that are specific to each locale. Like on the English one, we have uh, English KPIs. But of course, because English is so big, it's mostly dominating uh, the KPI, um, even on the KPI dashboard. Yeah. Um, so maybe that is the place for it as opposed to the, you know, the big KPI dashboard. You mean on the on each locale? Yeah. Uh, uh, 
what KPI are we talking about again? Sorry. Help, helpful votes. Yeah, the thing is that they're not. It's not enough volume. Only well, English has has maybe yeah. English has actually enough volume for that. Yeah, English but has a lot of other. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of other locales. Don't. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but of course, yeah. So but but even in that case, we should actually <coughs> be clearer about that because. Um, if, if you don't have enough votes, uh, then also your confidence in the walls will be huge. But today we don't even say anything about that. Right. Uh, so it's misleading. Um, I, I honestly, Kadir, and you've been mentioning about the confidence interval a couple of times already. I, 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 and I know that they're completely related. The problem that we have is that they are not even flat. So in German, Spanish, French, they're pretty much, they, they follow a, a soft trend and the rest because the volume is, and the confidence interval is huge. So basically it just it fluctuates a lot. And the, if the confidence interval is, is still big-ish, but it, it, it give us a soft trend, I, that's something that we can work around. I mean, you can't, this is not science. We can't really say this is perfect, but we need to make decisions based on data. And if we have data that it's, it's hinting something, that's better than not, uh, not to have data at all. So I think that overcomplicating, uh, adding layers of uh, complexity to the metrics, it just doesn't serve any good purpose. We don't, we don't wanna make sure that we have the, the perfect data, we want to make sure that we have data that enables us to make decisions. So again, going back to Michael's point, we do have, I think that we could do per language in, in the big five, but that's about it. German, French, Spanish, maybe Italian, and Italian, it will be like tricky. We are doing that already. But we're not promoting it that much. Yeah, maybe. Uh, promoting it yeah, like it's, how, it's, you mean? You mean me? Or? Yes. You said well, oh. we're not promoting it that much. I don't know what you, so what you mean it, by that. It, it's only for the, the community. We're not showing it anywhere else. You need to dig into the, into the KB well, dashboard for what? that particular locale. Right, well, we were, okay. Who else would you promote that to? Uh, in the KPA dashboard, for example, if that was something that we could, could be interested on. Oh, but what Michael was saying that the helpfulness shouldn't even be on the KPI dashboard, right? Not more uh, helpfulness right. metrics. Sorry, say that again? I thought we were just talking about we shouldn't even have it on the on the KPI dashboard, the overall. So why would we put all of the locale ones? I, I thought that you say that you wanted to do it. So you want to have the English one on only in on the KB dashboard? Right, because we were just saying that it's not, it's not, it's, we don't think it's a high level KPI that's not telling us, um, I mean, like I said, I've used it for English because it tells, it, it lets me know, like, it, it, in general, where we're going, um, uh, and and when there's spikes, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, this is, I, it's the thing. What do we want to use it for? To me, it doesn't seem like something that should be like um, goal oriented, like like let's get it to this level because that's somewhat arbitrary depending on what articles are linked from where, and you know you get a well-placed uh, link from Facebook and, hey, we won the yeah. goal for the quarter and it, it, Facebook doesn't come through with a link for you. Oh, we missed the goal for the quarter. So to me, it's not the type of thing to base a goal on, but it's good as overall diagnostic, right? Are we, are we trending up or are we trending down? Was there a yeah. big spike? What in the world happened that caused a big spike one way or the other? Because, you know, like that was one of our indications that our flash articles were hosed when flash went crazy, right. mm -hmm. you know? 
So, you know, I mean, at that point, that, that's a very good point. Uh, it's really, uh, we should force ourselves uh, to come up with uh, good, good things that, that will make, that we can base goals on. Uh, for example, when, when we did the, uh, uh, um, um, what, what the, the uh, product landing page report, um, I had this thing where, where I looked at uh, how many people are uh, going through from the product landing page to an article and how many people are rating an article as helpful. Um, what is the ratio, helpful ratio? And if you combine those two, uh, then you have the, uh, the percentage of people that you're helping. Um, so it's cool, like having the helpful votes is good to build that, um, but on its own, it wouldn't tell you much. But when you combine it with the article read, uh, like when, when you look at the funnel, and the funnel is, for example, the product landing page, you want to increase that, then you can look at um, the helpful votes because then it doesn't depend on Facebook or on any other external page. They're looking at a specific funnel. They're looking at people who land on a product landing page. And from there, you want to know how good is my product landing page and the subsequent pages? Uh, how, good do they, how good are they at uh, uh, leading people to the right article? And the right article is measured by the percentage of people who uh, mark an article as helpful. Um, that's what the product landing page was, was about. And we came up with like one goal for the product landing page there. But we don't have this, uh, maybe it doesn't even make sense, like this overarching goal for uh, the whole KB. Uh, so instead, we take the helpfulness for the KB. But that in itself isn't a goal, as you said. Uh, so you can't particularly optimize that. Um, yeah, so to me, it makes sense to, to take something more high level. Um, I would know what to do for the, uh, for the product landing page because that's something that I'm tracking continuously. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't know that for the whole KB at this point. And maybe we need to build those things for the whole KB. Like maybe we have uh, three high level uh, entry points in product, product landing page and Google. Right. And each of those three have funnels. Like, how many people are we getting through those uh, things? How many people are we, um, like what percentage is, is uh, led to the right article uh, for them? Um, that could be the KPI for us. For each of those three entry points, how many percent of those land on an article that they rate as helpful in the end? Um, I have right. that for the product landing page. I don't have that for Google and I don't have that for um, in product names. But those three would cover actually most of our visits. So maybe that's something for the for the KPI dashboard, or maybe the combination of those three. Maybe that's something for the KPI dashboard. I mean, to me, that feels like the other thing that I was going to suggest related to what we were just talking about, like the like uh, uh, like contributor uh, um, uh, flows, right? So we you just we talked about. Uh, mapping out all of those contributor flows and instrumenting them so you could see how effective they were. That's mm -hmm. sort of the same thing, right? Like you want to yeah. know, like, is this, oh my gosh, our flow from emails is tanked. What's going on? Oh, somehow our HTML emails broke and they're coming out jumbled, you know, or. Yeah, or people we, coming from Google, um, like, their helpfulness ratings is really low. Right. So yeah, the problem is not the article. The problem it's is the titles. Yeah, or the uh, mm. SEO that or, we are doing. Right. Yeah. Okay, guys, well, I have to go. Something to think about. I'll see you next week. Bye, Roland. Bye. Roland. See Bye. You. So that is definitely um, the thought I would like to. Uh, write down. Do you, any, do you have any other feedback regarding this? I mean, uh, just looking at these things, like, um, I still see there's just things that I have questions about, like, our helpful votes in the forum with all the giant down spikes that are probably not for real. Yeah. Is that helpful to have that?
are we doing something about those or like search click through rate I mean we're not making any changes in search um, you know daily unique visitors is interesting it's amazing how it's like doubled since we started measuring it yeah, we said back then that daily visitors is not a KPI. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, like additional information for us to give context. Right. Um, like, for example, when the number of questions go up, um, then you can also look at the visitor rate and see if that is somehow correlated, um, right. for example. Uh, I mean, the exit survey, I would love to see all the answers on the exit survey. Oh. I don't know, but I don't know if that's helpful. But I'm curious about them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I have a hard time writing and uh, talking, so uh, feel free to to also uh, jot down your your thoughts in the Etherpad. Okay. Yeah. So to, to answer the question about the questions, um, uh, the the helpfulness of questions. Actually, I I would question the question helpfulness of questions. <laughs> um, so, for one, uh, this is actually one of those cases where having the uh, confidence interval would be uh, helpful, because then it would tell you that the confidence interval is really low. Uh, so all of those spikes are normal, um, because we have so few uh, uh, votes. Uh, per day. If you go per week or per month, then of course it's it's a different story. Uh, but but if you look at them per day, then uh, we we have way way fewer uh, question votes uh, than article votes, uh, like on a mar um, on order of mag magnitude lower or even two magnitudes, uh, like twenty thousand uh, votes per day for articles, and I think about two hundred uh, for for questions. Or something like that. Um, so the, the per day thing is, is really uh, just not that useful there. Um, but the I mean, question is, of course, is it is it helpful at all? Like, because they are voting individual posts right. in the forum. And uh, the thing that we have a goal about is in the in the graph above on the solve rate, right? Yeah, exactly, because that's the one thing that you want to optimize for. Like, uh, the, the individual posts might be rated lowly, but as long as the solved rate is high, why would you care? Um, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit struggling with that one. I, I, I personally, I don't quite, we, we have, um, oh, 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 there is a huge echo. Oh, oh, anyway, uh, so... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I think uh, it's a birthday. birthday. You have to do your thing, thing again. Guys in Berlin? Guys in Berlin? Could you unplug and plug? Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, um, well, what did I want to say? Yeah, uh, so we, we have even, uh, like, like uh, it's not even shown as much in the forums anymore. Like, when something is helpful, the only thing that we show by now is that it is helpful. We don't even show the unhelpful messages uh, or the unhel unhelpful count uh, for a forum thread anymore. Uh, so you don't even know, like, is a thread helpful now or is it not helpful um, in, in, its, in, in the ratio? Uh, so we have, we have stepped away from that uh, rating for, for quite a while, but it's still on the KPI dashboard. Uh, so I think that it's a good question to ask. Do we still want to have it there? I'm a bit on the fence. Uh, does anyone else have input into that? Uh, 
maybe there's something to th uh, think about um, maybe for next week to really look into the uh, uh, look into the usage of that uh, KPI and maybe come up with a proposal to remove that I, or maybe somebody has a good uh, good reason for why you should keep it and but then if you keep it we should also do something with it that's the whole purpose of the KPI right you want to you don't want to just display it you want to take actions based on it um, like if it goes down you want to do something and it's been going down if you look at the history of that metric it's, it's actually been going down for for the last year or so um, it's been trending down for for a long time um, for two years <clears throat> yeah and yeah we haven't done anything about it in, but in the meantime the forum the reply rate went up to almost 100 percent and the soft rate went from 20 to 30 percent uh, so that's contradicting. We are getting better at solving people's problems and replying to them, but at the same time, the helpfulness rating is going down. So something is obviously not right. Um, either it's not measuring what it is supposed to measure, or maybe it doesn't even like. Yeah, maybe we don't even know what it is supposed to measure, uh, and that's why we are not even using it. Right. So good point to uh, put on this. Uh, I'm putting this here on the. Um, could we have more people going into that pool but not answering the is this helpful question? You said that. Can you, said can you that say answers, that again? You said that answers are going up and and uh, people are marking things solved. Could it be that more things are in that as solved bucket, people aren't rating them as helpful? So that would make the helpful votes go down. Oh, that is a good point. Um, actually, I don't know at this point whether we specified that, that when something is marked as a solution, that it should also be marked as helpful. Uh, Richard, do you remember that by any chance? Um, I don't think we, we do. I think there's a bug about that, about um, uh, voting when you mark as solution. I, I know also in the past I've given a correct answer that's not popular and and like there's once or twice where I just they just rack up negative votes unhelpful 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 just by the dozens and it's like yeah I know that's the actual answer you know yeah I don't I don't think that you should use the it, it, we're we're seeing more solutions given baseline for if things are helpful or not. Um, Patrick, you were breaking up. Could you, could you repeat that? I said, I, I, don't, I don't know that you want to use the, you, you were mentioning that there's more solutions. We're seeing th more things marked as solved and getting to more answers. <laughs> I don't think that you want to use that as your measure of uh, helpful votes should be going up because of that. Just because something solved doesn't mean that it was helpful, like Mar like Michael was saying. Uh, but is it useful to have that measure at all at that point? The helpfulness, right? I don't know. So, for context, when we decided the helpfulness of the forum was important, and I'm just derailing the conversation, but I think it's this is relevant. Uh, we decided to do that because we didn't have the exit survey and we didn't have a way of of having the helpfulness across the board. So how many the, the question the ultimate question is how many people are we helping? And the answers and the solutions only address the people who ask the question. Helpfulness tries to address the people who are coming after. Uh, and it seems that in this particular case, it's exactly the same thing as the helpfulness of the articles. It's just a metric that on paper, it was kind of like a workaround. It doesn't really serve any purpose and nobody pays attention to it. So instead of just rabbit holing and whys and hows, maybe it's just a matter of saying, hey, okay, this is not, this is not good on aggregate. But still, it's good to have those votes for other purposes, but as an aggregated metric, 
it really depends on the type of questions as we're getting at that particular time. Uh, so we also used to use uh, helpful um, votes to show things on top of the thread. Uh, but we have stopped doing that too because it just doesn't serve any purpose. Over 90, 95% of the threads are less than a page long. So we're just duplicating content on the same page. Um, so at this point, we have even less, less reason to even uh, use the, the helpfulness rating in its own. Uh, um, Marina, do, do you see any um, helpful, like, like any, any any reason for the helpfulness by now? Like any positive effect of that? Sorry, we're on mute. Uh, not really. So what, uh, what so exactly maybe we should do you want? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I'm just wondering, like, um, because I mean, we are not doing anything with it on the KPI dashboard, anything meaningful anyway. Uh, we are not using it to show things uh, on the thread anymore. Like, we're not highlighting it anymore on top of the thread. Um, and there were issues with it anyway, uh, as Michael said, that, that even good things were voted down. Um, in its current incarnation, it doesn't even make sense for us uh, to keep using it. Or should you rethink it? Well, why, why was it implemented in the first place? What was the reason behind it? Yeah, like I said, I mean, we, we used to like um, show it, show threads that were marked as helpful. We would show them on top of the thread, posts that were helpful, but we are not doing that anymore. Okay, then it doesn't make sense to have it, right? Right, that's why I was asking, like, do you see any other purpose for it, like any other? Thing where it's helpful? Nope. And maybe it's time to go away with it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, we can keep this discussion going. We don't have to make that decision right away. Um, so maybe somebody can come up with, we, we can think a bit, uh, about it a little bit more until next week. Um, but let me hold it, uh, write it down here. Okay. Um, all right. Anybody else for any of the KPIs that you can think of, like, like any input for them? Or maybe that's enough already. We've been talking about them for half an hour. You want to maybe table this discussion until next week? I mean, for my part, I would like to think about this a little bit more and also uh, meet with people from uh, the metrics team uh, to see what their input would be for, for our KPIs. Like maybe they have good ideas on how to use the exit survey as a good KPI um, or results from the exit survey better. Um, how to ask the right questions in the exit survey that we could then also use as KPIs um, on the KPI dashboard. So maybe that, that will be a better way to go about it. Um, and I still need to talk to Rebecca, Rebecca Weiss about, about that. Patrick, was it, was it you and me talking to Rebecca in uh, Toronto? Yes, yes. All right. Yeah, I wanted to uh, chat with her about the exit survey, actually, and see if um, we can ask questions on the exit survey that would make sense on the KPI dashboard instead of the current KPIs that we are using. She's pretty much an expert in those yeah, things. Yeah, she totally is an expert. OK. Um, so in that case, uh, like I said, this is the start of the discussion. Uh, this is not the discussion itself. Uh, we will need some time. Um, and, and yeah, so, so now we made a, made a start. Um, 
we can write down maybe as an action item even that everybody uh, thinks about the um, looks at the KPI dashboard and and uh, thinks about whether those things make sense for them or not um, until next week where we can tackle some of the other ones if we have a case like the forum votes where nobody is able to come up with a reason to keep it there then that's a pretty good indicator indicator that we should actually uh, remove it or at least uh, make that suggestion to the rest of the team um, so maybe one of one of them is able to come up with something but yeah so for the suggestion I think that's the way I would like to go about put you on board cool or not great writing this down as an action item All right, so yeah, uh, everybody to look at the KPI dashboard and think about the usefulness of the items on it so we can continue this discussion next week. I reiterate, this is the start of the discussion. It will take us a while to, to get to a final set and to make recommendations for that, but I think um, we have to start somewhere and we did that this week. So thanks a lot, everybody, for uh, chiming in. And of course, uh, the discussion is not limited to the uh, product, uh, uh, to the platform meeting. So if you want to uh, discuss about this or give feedback on this in the forums too, uh, feel free to do that. Uh, we are reading that to you so we can incorporate that. Um, but one action item for next week is to actually look at them, uh, take the time to look at the items and from your own position, uh, say whether they make sense for you and uh, whether we should keep them or not. Um, so we can come to a final recommendation at some point. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for participating. This was the platform meeting for this week, October 7th, unless somebody has something. November 7th, right. Totally right. Uh, unless somebody uh, has something they want to say, we can close the meeting at this point. Right. Thank you, guys, Bye. and I'll see all of you next week. Take care.